So yeah, first of all, thanks to uh, the organizers uh, for having me here. And thank you all for uh, staying on uh, Friday evening, 5 o'clock. There's a raffle afterwards, yes. so that's some motivation. OK, so uh, in today's uh, talk here, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the impact right, from HPC perspective uh, that we are making at uh, Schlumberger uh, in terms of fueling uh, fast and cost efficient uh, simulations as well as uh, visualization. And so a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a HPC and uh, 3D visualization manager. I focus on uh, innovation. Um, so Schlumberger by itself, uh, is an oil field uh, services company. Uh, we provide technology for oil and gas uh, exploration, uh, drilling, production, and pretty much uh, essentially uh, the entire space, uh, right? And uh, so, so the center here that we have is an innovation center. It's at the Sandhill Road uh, in Menlo Park. And uh, the focus is to bring uh, the latest uh, computer science technologies, partner with uh, universities, as well as uh, some of the Silicon Valley company, and apply those uh, technology and innovation to uh, uh, the oil field uh, domain. Uh, my background is uh, computer science. Uh, I have a PhD from uh, University of uh, Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Uh, my advisor is, was uh, Professor uh, Sanjay Kale. Some of you may know him, uh, Cham++, plus plus, if that sounds familiar to some of you. Um, I also teach uh, cloud computing at uh, Santa Clara University and uh, also consult in my part time. Um, so, a so couple of these numbers here, uh, does they raise any? Thoughts in anybody's mind? What the, what these numbers are? So related to computing, uh, we're talking HPC here, right? Okay, so this is uh, petaflops. Yeah, so this is basically uh, the R peak, the uh, two hundred point eight. Okay, my pointer is. So the 200.8 is uh, the R peak of uh, Summit, the number one uh, supercomputer. And then 143.5 is the sustained uh, um, with the Linpack benchmark. Right? So just throwing out this number kind of generating some interest. But uh, so 18.5 uh, petaflops uh, double precision is kind of, uh, some of some of our work uh, with HPC in cloud. Uh, so that's kind of comparing that to some of the number one supercomputer kind of falls around like between top 15, I would say, supercomputing. So in a nutshell, uh, if you are not able to stay for the entire time of the talk, uh, I just want to tell you what I'm going to talk. Uh, essentially, three important things. Uh, the first thing I want to kind of talk is in terms of the elastic uh, and scalable cost-efficient uh, high-performance computing in the cloud. Uh, now, when I'm saying HPC, some of you may just think about uh, your tightly coupled uh, MPI, communication intensive applications. Here, uh, some of our applications may not be that tightly coupled. It may consist of uh, jobs, uh, which maybe some of them may be small scale, but we have hundreds or thousands of such jobs, uh, which all need to uh, run, right? So one of the example of that work is the seismic processing in the cloud. So seismic processing, for those of you who may not be familiar, uh, essentially think of it like uh, sort of a CAT scan of Earth's uh, subsurface. And the goal is uh, basically to generate uh, the Earth's subsurface structure to figure out where there is a possibility of a reservoir, uh, essentially with the goal of uh, figuring out where the oil reservoirs are, right? And so the way it is done is by doing, first of all, you do seismic surveys, which send out uh, some of the seismic uh, or sound waves to Earth uh, subsurface, and then you measure the sort of reflections, so you get sort of raw data, and then run uh, the computation, denoising, all types of algorithm. Uh, um, and that's what essentially is seismic uh, processing uh, in a nutshell, right? 
so the second aspect of my talk is about uh, high performance uh, remote visualization. So some of the work that we have done in the visualization space, so moving from traditional uh, desktop visualization, uh, which is common in the oil industry, to more, more of a cloud native uh, scalable visualization, where the rendering happens on the cloud, uh, and then you are just streaming sort of the images uh, to the browser. Uh, the third aspect, if we have enough time, uh, that I want to talk about is uh, more towards how we are using containers and uh, Kubernetes and uh, the kind of that infrastructure to achieve some of the high throughput simula simulations. So use cases where we have uh, essentially small simulations, but then we want to run multiple realizations of those simulations uh, for uh, high accuracy and exploring uh, things like uncertainty uh, and optimization use cases. Uh, so I'll talk about specifically optimization of uh, oil field uh, production networks where we have uh, not like computer networks, but essentially networks of pipelines and equipments uh, which are used for uh, trans transferring oil from the place where it's produced to, to the place where essentially it can be refined or it can be used, right? So the bottom line is that HPC is enabling uh, oil and gas companies to explore much needed energy resources uh, and essentially to deliver those to consumers with uh, faster speed and uh, lower cost. <coughs> and one of the things that is enabling us uh, in, in the cost side is to use uh, some of the cloud processing uh, power and use the, the pay as you go kind of model. Okay, so kind of first talking about the seismic processing and the cloud work that we have done. Um, Shambhaji is, as I said, an oil and gas technology company. Uh, we have been there for years. We build technology for oil uh, exploration, drilling, production, and many other services. Uh, so to, so, to some of the computer scientists in, in this room, uh, this may be interesting, right, in terms of the data volumes uh, that we have. Um, out of all these services, the oil exploration, which is the seismic uh, data, is the most uh, larger scale, essentially. So as you can see, the seismic data, whether it's onshore or offshore, so basically it can range uh, to petabytes of uh, data uh, per project, and then you can have multiple projects per year. That's the kind of scale that we have in terms of the data. Uh, now, the other domains, such as uh, well data, where essentially when you're drilling the well, and uh, basically during, as you're drilling, you kind of want to take the measurements uh, uh, about certain properties such as uh, porosity or the properties of the rocks as you're drilling downhole, or also like the things like pressures and temperatures um, for certain simulations. Uh, then you also have the production data in terms of uh, data about the pumps, uh, pipelines, and so for instance, these are small per well, but then you have uh, large number of wells, uh, which can make it large. So seismic uh, exploration, uh, in a nutshell, as I said, basically the first step is the, the data acquisition, and then uh, you kind of build the subsurface uh, understanding uh, from the data, and uh, so essentially, as I said, the large uh, amount of data that is uh, recorded, it could be 20 to 100 terabytes uh, in one job, for instance, and then uh, this processing consists of large number of compute and IO intensive jobs which can run, in, uh, run concurrently. Um, we have, uh, like for instance, uh, one small job can use hundreds of nodes for several days. And then we can also have large jobs uh, such as uh, those uh, requiring three to five million uh, core hours. Uh, so you can, which can have thousands of nodes uh, for that kind of processing. So Shambhaji has software which uh, does seismic processing. Um, yeah. And uh, so that particular software is uh, the traditional software basically is Omega. And one of the things that we did at the Innovation Center here was to kind of collaborate with uh, some of our partners, uh, NVIDIA and Google in, in this case, and essentially transform that processing uh, from uh, the in-house uh, to the cloud, right? right? And why do we want to run in the cloud? Essentially, it enables us sort of the elasticity and scalability. Uh, we don't have to maintain uh, the data centers and keep them running at the peak uh, demand. But what we can do is we can scale up and down as and when 
we have uh, jobs uh, which need large amount of infrastructure. Uh, now, the key requirement for us is that when we have a job, we want to make sure that we can provision that infrastructure dynamically in a very short amount of time. Right? Uh, so that's where essentially we use uh, Google Cloud in this case, and then GPU nodes uh, along with uh, the regular CPU uh, nodes. Uh, so the time to decision is a competitive advantage, and we can also explore like increased number of scenarios by running all those things in uh, parallel. So quick view on uh, Shambhaji Seismic Software Stack. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, we have uh, traditional data centers, clusters of CPUs and GPUs. So our software runs uh, algorithms which are uh, not just one particular algorithm, it's a mixed uh, suite uh, of algorithms. Uh, and we have essentially file systems, layers of networking. Uh, the software stack is fault tolerant. Uh, and we have uh, custom job schedulers uh, for for this case. Now on 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 the Google Cloud platform, the the way that we uh, basically run is that we have, if you see in this picture here, we have uh, these sort of three uh, tiers here. So the the bottommost is the distributed uh, file system. So we have certain nodes uh, which run cluster. Then we have at the top we have a set of uh, uh, virtual machines, which are uh, durable infrastructure that we have all the time. Uh, for instance, uh, some of those are needed for logging purposes and so on. The cluster manager nodes here. And then uh, the majority of the infrastructure is, is ephemeral dynamic, which is created on demand uh, based on when we need. Uh, and uh, that infrastructure consists of a mix of uh, different types of uh, VMs. We do use uh, GPUs extensively because we get a great performance uh, per dollar for uh, seismic uh, processing uh, some of the algorithms here. And uh, the computation, as I said, these instances are dynamically created. Uh, the, we, of course, it's a large system, so we do want uh, monitoring and control. We use some of the Google internal tools in some, some cases, such as TechDriver. Uh, now, one of the challenges that uh, you'll see when we're talking in terms of terabytes and petabytes of data is to, of course, you can do that processing in the cloud uh, with so much uh, better performance or maybe reasonable performance, but then you also need to make sure that the data that you have, uh, when you transfer that data to the cloud, that, is, uh, that could be bottleneck in many cases. So, so for that reason, we, uh, we needed to have a high-speed link uh, between our data centers uh, to the cloud. And of course, security is an important uh, component during the whole process. To, to give you a kind of a glimpse of uh, uh, some of the workload running, so this chart here, so access is kind of the time. It's, it's a few days, uh, right? So 7 to 14 days. And then uh, the resource count is the number of uh, nodes or servers which are running at any particular time which are in use. So the green here is busy, so the nodes which are busy. Uh, the yellow is kind of idle. Uh, some of the nodes that we keep idle for specifically, say, for debugging or troubleshooting in uh, any particular case, red is uh, some of the nodes which fail. So as you can see here, for instance, we can uh, scale from zero, close to zero, to close to 5,000 or 4,500 nodes. And this is within a matter of uh, one hour uh, here. So we use this kind of uh, bunch of uh, different types of uh, nodes, and it's not just one type of node, as I mentioned. It's a mix of uh, CPUs and GPUs. We do use up to 7,000 GPUs in this case. Um, yeah, and then, of course, the I.O. is another critical component here, so uh, up to 220 uh, gigabytes per second uh, in this case. So this is one of, the, one of the three components that I wanted to talk about, seismic processing in the cloud, uh, very computationally intensive uh, workload. Yeah, question? So the workload and the in the parallel, or the Yeah, it, to, to, to the most part, right, yeah, in this case. Yeah, some of some, so this is, as I said, it's a mix of different uh, types of jobs, and most of the jobs are essentially embarrassingly parallel, so there's no uh, not communication. Some of them, a subset of those could be 
communication intensive and for those we have to kind of thin the skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so essentially, basically, I, uh, to my knowledge, uh, and Dave is here in the room, he may know better than me, because he has worked on that uh, a lot. Uh, but my belief is that we do some sort of checkpoint restart. Is that uh, true, or? No checkpoint. No checkpoint? OK, but restart. Okay. Any other uh, questions at this point? Okay, let's move on. Uh, so the next aspect that I want to talk about is uh, when we build this uh, model of the Earth, right? The next step for us is uh, really to visualize that, uh, because once we can visualize that in 3D, then the uh, geophysicists or the seismic uh, interpreters can look at uh, these uh, models, and then that's where they can uh, interpret them and identify where uh, there are interesting aspects. And based on how the Earth's structure looks like, they can make uh, certain uh, uh, predictions. So traditionally, uh, some of our uh, visualization uh, software has been basically we have durable infrastructure, uh, we have local data shared file system, and essentially we have mostly uh, sort of uh, desktop visualization software uh, that uh, you can install, and then uh, th there is that challenge there that essentially uh, from the time that you generate the data, right? So you have the seismic uh, data that is generated to to the time essentially you can visualize. So basically, you have these tapes and disks that you have to sort of move, and that data movement is an unproductive uh, activity which can take days or even weeks in uh, many cases. Uh, so that's the kind of model that we want to uh, get rid of and essentially get to the next generation, which is essentially uh, having a sort of visualization API uh, where we have these uh, dynamic uh, virtual machines which are generated on the fly. Uh, they do have uh, used GPUs in the cloud. And the data is stored in uh, the cloud storage. Uh, so your seismic uh, or other kind of data, not just seismic, but you can have other kind of oil, oil field objects such as wells and other uh, surfaces and so on. So those data could be stored in the cloud storage and then uh, dynamically as a request comes, you can spawn a virtual machine which reads the data. Uh, and I'll kind of show you a video of uh, a demo of that. But the idea is to have this, uh, everything happen spontaneously. Uh, so, do it, so that you don't have to wait for that data movement to happen. Uh, and the user could sit anywhere, could have a thin client, could be a mobile device, could be an iPad, could be a laptop, but the user doesn't need to have a powerful uh, server uh, in this case, as opposed to the traditional approach where you are doing sort of client-side visualization, where the data, all the data is coming to user's machine. And uh, think of it like uh, the analogy I kind of like to give is, sort of uh, before Netflix was there, for instance, you would have these, if you want to watch a movie, you would go to a store, uh, get a DVD or VHS, and then put it in your system and uh, basically start watching. If you don't like, then you have to do that round trip again. Similarly, uh, and then of course, after Netflix comes, now you have like a library of uh, movies which you can select and uh, instantaneously it will load. So similar kind of model is uh, something that we are applying to the oil field uh, visualization, where instead of uh, having that data and tapes to ship, you can have like a catalog of uh, oil field uh, data that uh, our customers can see, and then uh, if they have, as as they have subscription, then then once they click, they can uh, just uh, see that. So, for instance, here uh, there is a video which is kind of showing here. Uh, basically, uh, it's in a browser, and then uh, the, the red sort of uh, rectangles and triangles are reflecting uh, some of the oil field data. So in this case, they are seismic surveys, which are done at that particular location. So if I just click on that, it's basically creating, um, uh, what, what it does is it connects to the cloud, 
Uh, so there's services running in the cloud that we have, and it launches a virtual machine if, does, if it doesn't exist. In some cases, we proactively have some VMs running to minimize the time. And then basically, the data it loads instantaneously. Uh, now, of course, in some cases, the data is large. So it can have, say, hundreds of uh, gigabytes of data. And of course, you can't fit everything in memory. So we do uh, some sort of uh, level of detail kind of thing where as you are far, you will see only the uh, lowest resolution. As you sort of zoom in, you can see higher resolution uh, to, uh, to basically minimize your uh, wait time so that we don't, wait the, don't load the entire data uh, into the memory. Um, Yep. Question about your data set. You have dead tree, right? That's basically you're only thing that size in data is here to you is your density of mm -hmm. these three dimensional points. You would could be a could be a dense agent, but also mm -hmm. like this agent. Right. Something kind of thing. So you don't know anything about shear stresses or uh, you know, maybe you can infer that from the local structure. Yeah. You might be using mm -hmm. the shear stress. Yep. Did you guys end up using like a um, index or, or something about is this volume record or error? Did you guys use the index? Yeah, so I, actually I have a next slide on index as well. Are you referring to the NVIDIA index uh, yeah. technology? Did you use GDDD as well? The, the OpenDB like stuff that the NVIDIA has for? Not that, but we did explore with uh, index. Uh, so this is, as I said, this is. This particular one is doing sort of level of de detail-based uh, visualization, so it's not showing the full uh, resolution. And then we also tried out the NVIDIA we index also, to see. We also have a volume metric database, like a, not really a database, but it's a volume metric format. It's based off of OpenDB from the right. source. Did you guys end up using that for your support? Yeah, for, yeah I have the next slide on uh, some of the NVIDIA index work. Yeah, so, so again, I'm not a salesperson. I'm an engineering person here. But then, of course, we have this Delphi umbrella, which is our next generation product offerings. And some of them, the public ones, are definitely out there, as, as, as you said. So Intersect is there, which can run in the cloud. Then, of course, we have Petrel in the cloud, which is essentially what it does is basically you can have the Petra software and it is, is running as a VM in the cloud and you connect to that. But then this kind of becomes a cloud native visualization uh, offering uh, as, as it comes along, right? What about uh, Intersect? Right, so Intersect and Eclipse, as you said, they, these are uh, reservoir simulation software for everybody's uh, reference. So, and that is one type of application which is more uh, communication intensive, right? So though that is not embarrassingly parallel, it requires like a high uh, performant uh, network, right? So in that case, we I think the public one we already have out is with uh, Microsoft Azure. So you can then intersect in Azure uh, today. Uh, any other uh, questions? Okay, okay, so I'll move. Uh, how are we doing on the time? Okay, so I think it's feeling fine, yeah. Okay, so the next thing as I was referring to was, uh, we also tried uh, um, full uh, resolution visualization using index where we, you have, so this is your browser, and then you have essentially multiple VMs which are doing uh, distributed rendering. So pre the previous uh, demo I showed was basically there was only one VM with uh, one GPU which is uh, doing the visualization, but we can extend that 
to have multiple instances of uh, virtual machines and multiple GPUs using NVIDIA's index uh, distributed rendering. And uh, basically, the data set is kept in memory across the entire cluster. The larger the cluster that you have, uh, you can load larger and larger uh, data. Uh, it's proven to scale to petabytes of data. Of course, there is uh, the cost of GPUs, because as you are, um, as you are uh, running more and more uh, VMs with more and more GPUs, it can be pretty expensive. So there is this uh, trade-off between uh, the visualization that you want to have versus uh, the cost that uh, you are willing to pay. Right? So this is one in particular case, uh, one of the data uh, uh, set that we visualize using uh, index uh, with 16 uh, GPUs, uh, I believe. What's the resolution? Sorry? Uh, let's see. Do you see anything here? Okay. Okay. So, not sure it's here. I can I can check and uh, get back to you about that. So the next thing I want to talk about, uh, which is the third thing that I mentioned in my uh, start of the talk, is about how we are using uh, containers and Kubernetes, uh, applying those for some of our simulation software. Um, so to, to set uh, some of the stage, essentially, um, Shambhaje is, uh, as I said, in the business of uh, this exploration. Right, uh, which you kind of saw in the seismic uh, acquisition and not acquisition now, but seismic processing. Uh, but then also uh, in terms of building this uh, or helping build the infrastructure for uh, bringing the oil down uh, from uh, from uh, from downhole and all the way to essentially um, where it can be used. Right. So in terms of having these uh, simulation software, which can help you predict and optimize. Uh, the production of oil. And it, it is a massive uh, feat of engineering to build such sort of an infrastructure to extract and uh, transport the amount of uh, fluid uh, to the processing facilities where it, it is uh, converted to uh, consumable products. And uh, these infrastructure are a complex uh, network of uh, thousands of miles of pipelines and production equipment uh, that can span uh, continents and seas and request sophisticated uh, controls. Uh, so one of the things, uh, or the software that we have is uh, called PipeSim, which is a multi-phase uh, flow simulation software. So you have uh, fluid, which is a mix mixture, mixture of, uh, you can have gas and oil and water. So it's multi-phase and then, yeah, basically we want to simulate uh, uh, with uh, using software tools to simulate the flow of uh, oil, gas, and uh, water uh, under varying conditions and control settings. Uh, so if you see you have, say, hundreds of wells, and then you have pipelines connecting them, and each well has certain parameters that can be controlled, uh, such as the pressure and sort of choke points and things like that. Uh, and then that kind of entire thing becomes a system. Uh, it's a network uh, from a production perspective. and. Um, Based on how you tune these parameters, you can uh, change the total overall production, uh, oil production, uh, for your system, right? Uh, so, so then this software uh, essentially applies high-performance computing techniques to solve uh, these uh, equations of uh, conservation of momentum, energy, um, and uh, basically helps us uh, do that. Um, as I said, the use case is the optimization that I'm going to talk about for production networks. So while you have this uh, system of, uh, say, wells, so you have 100 wells, so each of them is basically kind of has certain parameters that you can tune. And for each configuration, you can use the simulation software to uh, sort of estimate uh, what will be your total production. But then because you have these 100 uh, wells and each well may have, let's say, even Say, for instance, if it has uh, five tunable parameters, then you have these 500 variables, and your system 
is uh, the combinations and permutations, if you see, would be uh, very large. And if you want to come up with an optimal solution, so you want to optimize uh, for your total overall production, the number of possibilities that you have to try out kind of grows exponentially. And for each of that possibility, you have to run a simulation to uh, get uh, or estimate what will be the total production. So the kind of uh, problem uh, that we have becomes uh, very large. So for instance, here it's kind of showing uh, you this system, right? So you have these wells here at the left, you have in the middle and then here. And then each of these points, for instance, these are kind of the choke points. And then uh, basically they're connected here to the facility. Uh, so you have this entire sort of network and uh, one of the things that we have done from the innovation perspective is rather than solve this entire system uh, as a whole, we can break down this into subnetworks. So for instance, this is a subnetwork, this is a subnetwork, uh, and these three are subnetworks. And you can solve each of these subnetwork uh, problems independently. And then you can do some, some uh, set of iterations to make sure that basically you get when you solve each of them independently, you get certain parameters uh, which are optimal for this subnetwork. And then you have to bring those all together to make sure that you have a consistent uh, convergible system. Right? So that can take uh, a few iterations. Uh, now the good thing about this part is that when you break it down into subnetworks, these can be solved in parallel. Uh, so you don't have to do all of them sequentially, so you can do them in parallel. And that's where we, we can use uh, some of the scaling or elasticity of uh, uh, cloud with containers and Kubernetes to solve these in uh, parallel. So, so the system that we developed here, essentially, so we have this uh, sort of a front end with a Cupid uh, AMQP broker, which receives uh, requests. Uh, there's a front end web service uh, using Flask and engines. And then you have this uh, optimizer uh, service, which will listen to the optimization request. Uh, and then you have a subnetwork optimizer uh, the service. So subnetwork will work only on the uh, s small uh, subnetworks. And then it will run the network simulation. Uh, and then you can have a bunch of these running in parallel. And each of these network simulation, which is the pipe sim simulation software that we have, that internally also uses MPI for uh, scaling. Um, so we have this, each of this is MPI uh, uh, simulation, and then you can have multiple of those, they can all run in parallel, and then you can have these multiple of subnetwork optimization running in parallel. Uh, and this is all running, these are basically individual Docker containers running in a Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster. So in terms of some of the results in this particular case with the optimization solution, so the blue curve here, uh, first of all, the this y axis is the time to optimize for the total uh, solution. The x axis is the network size, which is the number of wells. So as you are growing from, say, here to here, you are kind of making the problem bigger and more complex. Uh, so the blue curve, as you see, kind of grows uh, exponentially here as you increase the number of uh, wells. Right, so the time to optimize kind of grows uh, to uh, very large, and we cannot solve it uh, in some cases. If we have large number of wells, it can take days uh, to solve uh, the problem. Uh, the red curve is where we uh, do it using the decomposition algorithm. So we break it down into subnetworks and solve those subnetworks uh, independently. Uh, but we're still using, uh, basically still running everything on a single uh, machine. Uh, so we are not really using full uh, parallelization potential. And uh, the yellow curve is where we uh, run it in, uh, in the cloud or in, a, in an infrastructure where we kind of uh, scale uh, based on the application need. So as, as you get more and more uh, work, so basically as you launch more containers, automatically uh, it can auto scale and it can uh, launch new VMs which can run uh, as uh, basically run this workload. So the yellow curve is where we kind of get this scaling uh, for the subnetwork decomposition, which runs in uh, parallel. So yeah, so I think uh, sort of coming to the conclusion, and I think I'm uh, good on time here, 
In a nutshell, uh, I talked about three aspects where we are applying HPC and uh, visualization uh, to some of the innovation uh, that's happening within the oil field industry, uh, the elasticity and scalability of uh, the cloud, uh, remote moving from client side, uh, limited size visualization to a visualization of large data set with uh, remote uh, and using uh, GPUs in the cloud. And then the third kind of model where we have to run uh, these multiple simulations uh, in, uh, for a variety of reasons for exploring multiple realization in some cases. In some cases, it's uh, basically trying out with uh, under uncertainty, but we can do that by uh, starting small and let the infrastructure kind of scale based on, uh, on the demand. Uh, and uh, the last slide, I think, yeah, I sort of want to thank you all for uh, listening and uh, a call to engage with us. As I said, we are very close here uh, in, uh, um, uh, on Sandal Road in Menlo Park, and definitely uh, as a mission uh, that we have, we are definitely interested in uh, assessing and adopting the latest uh, HPC technologies. So I was very uh, happy with all the talks, uh, and we kind of learned a lot about container technologies, AI, uh, everything uh, in the last two days. And uh, some of those, we would definitely want to collaborate and have some partnership around on that innovation. We'd be happy to host and meet you at the STIC Center that we have here. Uh, feel free to reach out to, uh, to me or talk to me. I have Dave and Rod here from Shambhaji here as well. I'm also the organizer of uh, HPC in Cloud uh, Meetup, uh, Bay Area Meetup. So actually, I think Ebru here, uh, we were kind of exchanging messages, <laughs> kind of organizing a meetup. So uh, definitely, if you want to present there, uh, some of the talks will be definitely interesting there. And uh, just a last point about recruiting. I'm also recruiting for HPC and visualization engineers here. So thank you again uh, for listening and being here on a Friday evening. Uh, and I can have some more questions here. Migration? Yeah, so the reverse time migration, I think uh, traditionally, I think we are using uh, single precision. We're traditionally using single, being the fact that it doesn't express the human health issues. Yeah, single precision. But we are, we are looking into algorithms where we can uh, do like, yeah, on a shorter. Mm -hmm. For seismic processing, I think it's uh, terabytes of data. Uh, yeah, I mean for for a single workload, which can consist of multiple of uh, sub. So, right. One of the sub. Right. Thank you again, and uh, yeah, if there are no more questions.